there's like consequences on on a lot of levels, right? So on the one hand, I'm hoping that the end of civilization and a much greater movement and understanding of the way egalitarian complex societies or even all egalitarian societies, how they reproduce themselves and exist, I would hope that it would help us realize the importance of collective solutions to social mm-hmm. problems. And perhaps mm-hmm. it would sort of act as maybe a counterwind to the sort of, I, I guess you're like describing the Fukuyama, the liberal approach to everything, the, the sort of hyper-individualized homo economist, the yeah. maximizer. I think we have to accept the fact that there are lots of grand social problems that require collective responses. On the other hand, those collective responses need not be driven by coercive exploiting yep. elite. Like they can come yep. from emergent bottom-up processes. And I think that's very exciting. Because I think I think that's a capacity in human political economy that's not getting nearly enough attention, so to speak. Mm-hmm. It's almost been denied. So I hope that understanding the deep history of egalitarianism and the deep history of egalitarian growth, and that we're not necessarily moving through these discrete mm. stages like the neo-evolutionists sort of outlined, I, I think that's really important. That said, I also think it's important to recognize that there have been monumental changes over time and that the way Bronze Age egalitarian societies mm. operated yep. is fundamentally different from the way like a capitalist society operated. So. Mm-hmm. The, the sort of implicit interpretation of Indus civilization as kind of like peaceful traders, I think is heavily influenced by interests in ancient globalization, ancient mercantile activity. It's, it's, a, it's just ascribing causality to almost like this kind of like implicit proto-capitalist group. And I think that's also, I think that's a misstep also. So the, the Bronze Age economies are different from Iron Age economies are different from capitalist economies. And we have to understand that. And at each, with each revolution in time, the range of human possibilities has been restricted and changed and modified. And so yep. we, we need to really do what we can to remember. I mean, Graeber talks a lot about political imagination. We need to mm. be sure we don't lose our political imagination. imagination, 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 imagination.